हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल दिस इज सौम्या एंड दिस इज दि पार्ट फाइव वीडियो ऑन सेल्फ सिग्नलिंग सो टूडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू विद द सिग्नलिंग मीडिएटर्स ओके इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट दि सिग्नलिंग मीडिएटर्स लाइक राइट लाइक आई हेव टोल्ड दैट आई हेव गिवन द इन्फॉर्मेशन दैट वी हेव फाइव टाइप्स ऑफ सिग्नलिंग मीडिएटर्स दैट इज इफेक्ट ऑफ अडाप्टर प्रोटीन सेकेंडरी मेसेंजर्स प्रोटीन कैनेसिस एंड ट्रांसक्रिप्शन फैक्टर्स राइट एंड इन प्रीवियस वीडियोज हेव कंप्लीटेड दिस वन इफेक्ट ऑफ अडाप्टर प्रोटीन Uh, and uh, secondary messengers in this video uh, we will continue with uh, that we left with two uh, signaling mediators that is protein kinase and transcription factors okay and if you didn't watch this video please uh, uh, watch those video that uh, those videos will be helpful to understand these uh, cell signaling um, chapter very well because these all includes the basics and which will give us enough knowledge and thorough understanding on this uh, about this uh, chapter thank you now we will start with the protein kinase today okay in this video then protein kinases as we already know these are are signaling mediators okay then what is the function of these protein kinases these are phosphorylating enzymes okay these are phosphorylating enzymes then what is phosphorylating uh, means here phosphorylation what is phosphorylation phosphorylation means here uh, these uh, the phosphorylation process is like this uh, the uh, it changes it uh, uh, when the enzyme get phosphorylated there is a change in the or uh, structure Uh, conformation of a uh, of an enzyme or a protein and uh, and it ca uh, causing it to become either active or inactive or you can say deactive or it is going to modify its function that is the function of the phosphorylate uh, phosphorylation here the protein kinases actually adds phos phosphate okay inorganic phosphate to an enzyme to make it active okay that is that is called as protein kinase okay here uh, that is the function of the protein kinase these phosphorylate and regulate further signaling mediators or transcription factors and end targets so what is the next function so after the enzyme gets phosphorylated okay it is again in turn going to uh, transfer the information or it is going to regulate it may going to activate in a, or inactivate the next signaling mediator or if uh, uh, like uh, they may, uh, this those signaling mediators are uh, maybe a uh, transcription factors or it may be the last one that is uh, last one that is end target okay last end target here for make you to understand here you can see i have drawn the diagram about phosphorylation here the protein kinase this one is protein kinase okay uh, these protein kinases if it is an enzyme think this is an enzyme which is uh, inactive okay this is inactive okay when protein kinase comes and uh, comes and it will uh, comes and binds and it will adds the inorganic phosphate and then the enzyme become activated it will get activated so now it is in a activation condition okay but it also do the one more function that is uh, sometimes uh, even this uh, phosphorylated one will be in a inactive state okay inactive uh, state so this one will remove the um, an organic phosphate and it will become active so for example for make you to understand i have drawn the one more uh, uh, diagram here so the protein kinase the function of the protein kinase here this one is going to uh think this is an one uh, enzyme okay any enzyme so i named it as an uh, any x enzyme and this is uh, uh, sorry this enzyme x okay enzyme x which is which is in inactive state which is in active state how it is this inactive state is converted into active state uh, because this kinase the protein kinase okay uh, by the uh, use of energy molecule that is atp atp is broke down into adp and inorganic phosphate and it will gives that inorganic phosphate to this molecule this enzyme and it will become get activated okay that is actually called as phosphorylation and here there is there is an one more enzyme called as phosphatase actually it removes the inorganic phosphate okay this uh, enzyme have an inorganic phosphate here so it, it this phosphate uh, removes the inorganic phosphate and makes it inactive okay and we need both active state also inactive state for the regulation because some of the pathways have to be started some of the function have to be taken place and some of the function have to be uh, stopped when we are not required so uh, these two are very important enzymes where they will help in activation and inactivation here even the protein kinase sometimes it will it will do it will uh, does the two functions activation and inactivation uh, also okay that's about that so after uh, see uh, here uh, you can see uh, the, uh, you can see this one 
I will make you to understand with the diagram here. So I have explained in the previous uh, uh, video, right? This is if you think this is the plasma membrane. Okay, so um, this is the plasma membrane. We we have the receptor here. Uh, this is the receptor, and signaling molecule comes and uh, comes and binds here. Okay. And after the uh, com, uh, after signaling molecule comes and binds to the receptor, it will makes a uh, makes in some uh, it forms a ligand, okay, and it will bring some conformational changes, okay. And, and after the series of signaling mediators have been activated, okay, we know that there are five types of signaling mediators we have been uh, that we have been studied, okay. This is the signaling uh, mediators here. The signaling mediators now we are studying about the protein kinase, okay. Think this is the protein kinase signaling mediator. This pro protein kinase signaling mediator. Uh, after uh, this protein can is uh, signaling mediator it will transfer the inorganic or it will phosphorylate so that next the next signaling mediator it may be the, what could be the next signaling mediator it may be any signaling mediator okay uh, that i have mentioned those four five types of signaling mediator it may be a effector effector ion channel or effector enzyme okay uh, or a, a secondary messenger okay or any end target like transcription factors okay like that so it will uh, transfers the it, it will activates the next signaling mediator that's the uh, meaning of this one okay that is the meaning of this one okay these phosphorylate and regulate the further signaling mediators or transcription factors and end targets okay the next one the protein kinases are usually activated by secondary messengers okay this is uh, sometimes even these protein kinases how these will uh, these are the ones which are protein kinases are the one these will activates the uh, next uh, uh, signaling mediators it may activate or inactivate but how these protein kinases are in turn activated for example here you can see so i said this protein kinase activates the next one right it is going to activate the next one now the question is how this one is get activated uh, this one is usually get activated by a secondary messenger what is this secondary messenger i have explained in detail in the um, previous uh, video uh, uh, this is also in signaling mediators okay usually this will be activated by secondary messenger okay the the examples for um, protein kinases are here uh, this uh, um, a cyclic AMP that is cyclic adenosine monophosphate that actually activated by protein kinase A. Here the protein kinase A represents the adenosine. Then next example is cyclic guanosine monophosphate that is activated by protein kinase G that is guano, uh, guanine. Okay, and DAG. Okay, this one is activated by protein kinase C and PIP3. This one is activated by protein kinase B. These are uh, these are actually serithionine uh, uh, based um, uh, protein uh, kinases. Okay. So these are the example and now we will move on to the next uh, point here in some signaling pathways several kinases may be involved okay so uh, the, the the diagram that i have shown uh, shown here uh, showed that the, that about the signaling pathway okay here uh, this is about the signaling pathway right? this is one signaling pathway in, in signaling pathway, pathway not only one protein kinase is involved there are many uh, protein kinases will be involved okay now next uh, question and these phosphorylate and regulate each other in a series and these protein kinase in turn even uh, here if you think this is one more protein uh, protein kinase sorry one protein kinase these will activate or regulate the another protein kinase like that okay these will be involved like that in a series such signaling pathways can be specifically referred as phosphorylase or phosphosignaling cascade if you see like that so then that kind of signaling pathways actually referred as phosphorylase or phosphosignaling cascades okay the next one the, the final uh, the last one the fifth signaling mediator is transcription factor and this transcription factor uh, this is the final signaling mediator when the end target is a gene okay so when the end target is gene uh, uh, that is actually uh, transcription factor is the uh, signaling mediator okay i hope you understood all the uh, five types of signaling mediators now i will uh, explain uh, two more important uh, 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 words which are very important in the signaling uh, uh, understanding the cell signaling that is scaffold, uh, scaffold fruit tree and uh, crosstalk okay we will start with the first one that is scaffold proteins what are these scaffold proteins are first we will look at the definition here these proteins bind a few signaling mediators uh, bind a few signaling mediators and causes their physical co-localization at a particular site inside the cell okay so here the scaffold protein means these are all these are nothing but the proteins scaffold means scaffold means they will combine all the signaling mediator 
and they will causes the uh, uh, physical uh, co localization and they, it will make them to um, um, replace their uh, uh, place uh, uh, location and they will make it uh, the series uh, location uh, in a particular site okay so for example make you to understand here think this is the signaling okay so a plasma membrane or trans membrane this is the receptor and this is the signaling molecule okay after that we know that here the signal transduction pathway is going to start and next what we are going to get we are going to get the signaling mediators it may be a uh, effectors adapter proteins or um, effectors adapter proteins or secondary messengers okay or protein kinases or anything okay so this is the signaling uh, uh, signaling mediators like this so the pathway is started here okay and if they are located here and there okay they, they will be located here and there so what this scaffold scaffold proteins will do this scaffold protein the function of this scaffold protein is to Uh, make them in a series way, way like this they will scaffold they will hold all these uh, signaling mediators in a uh, series like this that means it will uh, do the physical co local uh, co localization so that they will seriously arranged like this okay so then uh, then why why it, why it does so what is the use uh, uh, by this okay so now we will know that uh, we will learn that why, why why it is going to happen like that what is the use from that uh, why mean here the such physical local localization of signaling mediators come from the following advantage advantages let us know which are those means these signaling mediators interact better with each other so so if you think this uh, in this signaling uh, path, uh, pathway so you think if they are located here and there if they are located far away so it will be difficult to uh, do the communication so when they are uh, arranged neatly so it will be quick Uh, in the process for the communication that's why the signaling mediators interact interact in a better way okay uh, that is the first use second use see uh, speed of transfer of information will be high right so another next one if they are um, located properly arranged properly then we can uh, the information is is uh, transferred with a high rate uh, uh, will be high okay and fidelity high fidelity and accuracy of transfer of info information will be transferred in a accurate manner okay because they will located one by one after the one uh, the scaffold protein will help in binding them so that um, and there are there are no any intermediators to change their functions okay so uh, that's how the uh, accuracy will be good next uh, and there is no inter interference from related components of the other pathway so just now i said so if they are located like that so there is no inter interference from any other components in the same pathway but there is only one disadvantage from this scaffold protein that is they do not allow signal amplification we know that in uh, secondary messenger actually what it will give say secondary messenger which amplifies the um, uh, information see i have um, uh, explained this in the previous video that is uh, this secondary messenger it is also signaling mediator right so this uh, this is an intracellular component that receives the info from effector enzyme and it is going to amplify means it is going to multiply and transmit info to the further signaling mediator that is the function of secondary messenger so secondary messenger will helps uh, in the amplifying it so the information will be multi multiplied so that many people um, the many sorry many components uh, can uh, uh, take the information and it will be very fast but what happens here when the signaling mediators are localized okay they are co-localized like this so when they are co-localized this then that means amplification will will not be possible okay that is the disadvantage here and the example for this coupled protein is that j i p 1 that is j i p means j means j n k interaction protein 1 uh, okay it is the best characterized mammalian scaffold protein and another scaffold protein here is that s t e 5 is a scaffold protein in yeast okay the next one crosstalk very uh, simple easy to understand the uh, what is crosstalk here see interaction between components of two or more signaling pathway this enables us to construct signaling network that actually called as crosstalk for example think this is a one signaling pathway right this is one signaling pathway okay and there will be one more signaling pathway like that okay one not only one more there will be many signaling pathways like this 
okay there will be a many signaling pathways uh, like this this is one more signaling pathway so like this many signaling pathways will be there and the components or uh, the components which are present here will be interact with these signaling pathways are also okay so this cross tuck will enables uh, uh, enables the uh, enables the, uh, the components of two, uh, one or two, one or more signaling pathways okay it will helps to interaction interaction between the components of the components of the two signaling pathways or mo even more than two signaling pathways so by this what happens we are going to get the signaling networks means the one component which is involved in one signaling pathway it may also involved in the another signaling pathway and this one may be involved in another signaling pathway okay like this so and it will forms a network cross talk cross means between two okay talk means communication here so here two three signaling uh, transduction pathways are interacting okay so that's about that so now we uh, studied about the signaling mediators how the signal transduction pathway is activated so we get to know the how the signaling pathway is activated now the question is how that signaling pathway is going to inactivate because after some find of action is taken place after some kind of response has been given to the uh, stimulus we have to stop that right that is very important if we didn't stop means uh, the process is going to uh, uh, continuously going to occur so we have to stop that so the next in the next video we are going to how how we are going to what are the mechanism okay the main specific mechanisms how uh, uh, it is going to uh, stop okay that signaling pathway is going to stop so those mechanisms i will be explaining in my next video that is actually called as termination mechanisms okay we will study that in next video i'm hoping this video will be helpful <coughs> sorry i am hoping this video will be helpful uh, if you learn something from this video please do share and subscribe thank you everyone